listener note, this episode contains some adult language and themes. 911, this must be recorded. Where is your emergency? Um, it's 3.07 in the morning. A 911 call comes in from Sousa Baranowski Correctional Center, a maximum security prison in Massachusetts. I need a ALS ambulance for an inmate hanging. Okay, I'm going to put you on with Wood. One minute. Thank you. A man has been found hanging from a makeshift noose made from a bedsheet in his cell. The emergency medical team arrives at the prison at 3.29 a.m. By then, prison guards have cut the inmate down and performed chest compressions. 20 minutes later, he still isn't breathing. A little after four in the morning, the man was officially pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. He was one of 14 inmates to die by suicide that year in Massachusetts prisons. And he was the only one of those 14 whose suicide made big headlines. First in New England. Fox 61's Caitlin Gosling. She has the latest details as well as reaction. Caitlin? Yeah, Aaron Hernandez was discovered dead in his prison cell by corrections officers in Shirley, Massachusetts, just after 3 o'clock this morning. Then the story went national. Uh, breaking news, Aaron Hernandez, the former Patriots tight end, committed suicide. Aaron Hernandez, who was found dead in his prison cell. What was discovered written on Aaron Hernandez's head when he was found in that cell. On that early morning in April of 2017, Hernandez became one of a number of famous ex-football players who've taken their own lives. He left behind many unanswered questions about his mind, his crimes, and his many secrets. Questions, too, about the role that football, the game, and the business might have played as Aaron Hernandez went from a star athlete to a convicted murderer to a suicide victim. More than a year after his death, we wanted to know what happened to Aaron Hernandez? And who might have prevented it? This show is sponsored in part by ADT. ADT can design and install a smart home just for you, backed by 24-7 protection. A new smart home at your service, customized for your lifestyle. With your secure smart home, you can set up custom automations unique to your home that are all controlled from the ADT app or the sound of your voice and backed by 24-7 protection. Like doorman service, ADT automation to unlock the door for packages, friends, or your kids. Neighborhood watch service, which turns on outdoor lighting and makes it look like your home even when you aren't. And turndown service, ADT automation that arms your system, locks your doors, and turns down your lights and thermostat. And you don't have to worry about installing and configuring your system. ADT will do it for you. Visit ADT.com slash podcast to learn more about how ADT can design and install a secure smart home just for you. That's ADT.com slash podcast. From the Boston Globe and Wondery, I'm Bob Holler, and this is Gladiator, an investigative series about Aaron Hernandez and Football Inc. This is Episode 1, Hail Mary. I'm a longtime sports writer, but this is not your typical sports story. I've been assigned to the Globe's investigative spotlight team. For months, my colleagues and I have been examining the rise and fall of Aaron Hernandez. Hernandez's unraveling occurred while he was playing under the bright lights of the NFL. He spent his entire professional career, all three seasons, with the New England Patriots. In those years, he was a key weapon for one of the most successful teams in football history. Now, I grew up loving the Patriots, watching them play at Fenway Park, Boston College, and Harvard Stadium before they had a home. I've watched some of those players age, some painfully because of football. I've met men younger than I am, men who played in Super Bowls for the Patriots, whose brains are so damaged they can't find their way home. After he died in April of 2017, researchers found that Aaron Hernandez's brain had been badly damaged by his football life. Our reporting uncovered new recordings and public records that have never been seen or heard before. We spoke to people who have never previously agreed to be interviewed. And we looked at parts of his life he kept hidden, 
including his childhood and his sexuality, to see how they might have affected the course of his life. And what we found was that some of the most elite coaches, athletic programs, and sports agents seemed to look the other way, even as evidence mounted that Aaron Hernandez's life was spiraling out of control. Instead, they did what it took to keep a great player on the field. Opening weekend in New England. And that's Aaron Hernandez, a rookie tight end inside the 20 and slashing to the right. Hernandez dragged down at the 13 yard line. By... Aaron Hernandez stood six foot two and weighed 240 pounds. He had lightning quick speed for his size and incredible coordination. I thought he was exceptional and that he had completely rare abilities, tremendous hands. That's Greg Bedard, a former Boston Globe football writer. He's now the owner and columnist at bostonsportsjournal.com. He was basically a blend of a running back wide receiver and a tight end all in one player. That's how versatile he was. And, you know, his skill set, you just saw him and it didn't take you very long to say, this guy is going to be a star in this league. Hernandez excelled at every level. We kind of all knew, all the friends knew that Aaron was going to make it big. And then as a college player at the top-ranked University of Florida. He's the best tight end that's played here. It was almost like he, he was like a, a meteor that came through here and went, was really good and left tragedy in his wake. And then in the NFL. His quickness, his uh, catching ability, his ability to start, stop, sudden change as a tight end to be able to run routes from the outside like an outside receiver, run inside receivers like a slot receiver, stretch the field. The play was some of the best wide receiving I've seen in my NFL career. It was spectacular. He was drafted by the Patriots in 2010, and he quickly became a star. In his second season, he and tight end Rob Gronkowski became the most productive tight end tandem in NFL history. Hernandez alone gained almost 1,000 yards as a receiver and running back. Boston Globe sports writer Ben Volan remembers those days. Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski were the preeminent duo in, in the league, and they were kind of revolutionizing NFL offenses with two tight ends, and you know, no one in the league really knew how to stop those two guys. So for a little while, it, it worked perfectly. Tight ends. What a season it's been for the Patriots. Gronkowski and Hernandez together. But life in the NFL was far from easy. Like most of his peers, Hernandez played through pain. He took medication to cope with injuries. He did what it took to keep playing. In the first round of the 2011 playoffs, the Patriots faced the Broncos. Early in the fourth quarter, Hernandez got the ball and charged head first towards the end zone. But was stopped cold by a Broncos player and went down hard. After a few seconds, he was back up and trotted off the field. There goes Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, he took a shot there. Yeah, the Patriots classified the head injury as minor and quickly cleared him to play. He helped them win their next postseason game, and then they were headed to the Super Bowl. Two times these teams have played, they just simply have no answer for him. Antrell roll on him now, gonna try and jam him off the line of scrimmage. Second and a deuce, and over the middle, getting free. On February 5th, 2012, with all of America watching, Hernandez's touchdown gave the Patriots their biggest lead of the Super Bowl, 17 to nine. In the end zone, he performed a touchdown celebration. In front of millions of television viewers, he simulated unlocking a bank vault, yanking out an armful of dollar bills, and tossing them in the air. I was there, helping to cover the game for the globe, and I thought, there goes another showboating NFL star. But in the fourth quarter, the Giants rallied. Brady, he's going to get sacked at the 13 yard line. That's just in time. Take the timeout. Fucking 16. With 57 seconds to play, Patriots quarterback Tom Brady, a master of last minute comebacks, attempted seven passes, four of them to Hernandez. And the Patriots still had a chance to win the game on the final play with a Hail Mary pass. Brady, barring a defensive foul, the game ends here. 
to the end zone. Hernandez is there. Tipped and batted. Gronkowski can't get it. Incomplete. The Patriots lost 21 to 17, but Hernandez's star was rising. In only his second season, he had commanded the spotlight in football's biggest moment. Uh, you know, I don't know how old Aaron was at the time, you know, 22, 23, but he's on you know, arguably the best team in football. That's Brian Murphy, his agent. He's young. He uh, is playing at a high level, and I'm sure he expected that this would be one of many Super Bowl opportunities for him. So I think that was not, he was disappointed to lose, but he thought, hey, we'll get him next year and the next year and the next year and the next year. But it would be his first and only Super Bowl appearance. In the first months after the Super Bowl, Hernandez's future looked bright, and the Patriots did something unprecedented. They reached an agreement with his agent, Brian Murphy, to award him a $12.5 million signing bonus, the largest for a tight end in NFL history, as part of a massive new contract worth more than $41 million. They made a very young man very rich. He was all of 22, and he was grateful. As football reporters gathered around him, Hernandez extolled the virtues of being a Patriot. This is a place that not only did it change my future from them paying me, but it just changed me as a person because you can't come here and act reckless and do your own stuff. And that was one of the persons that I came here by the acted the way I wanted to act. But they, you, you get changed by Bill Belichick's way. And you get changed by the Patriot way. And now that I'm a Patriot, I start living like one. And the Patriot way. It's shorthand for the way Coach Bill Belichick builds his team and wins. The New England Patriots. You know, 90% of that locker room wouldn't start on another team or make the roster, yet the Patriots bring them on. That's Brandon Lloyd, a former wide receiver and teammate of Hernandez's. You know, they're, they're bringing on players with uh, troubled pasts. Uh, they're bringing on players who've been cut or recently released and then they go there and the coaching staff is good enough to put them in the right position but they pay them so little money that the the players are incentivized to do what they're coached to do because if they don't do it there then they can't do it anywhere else because they're not good enough or their past uh, will make teams pass on them but having too little money wasn't hernandez's problem anymore Suddenly flush with cash, he bought a fancy house in the Boston suburb of North Attleboro, not far from Gillette Stadium. And he expressed his gratitude to Patriots owner Robert Kraft. And I know he had a unusually close relationship with some of the uh, coaching staff. I know he was very fond of Mr. Kraft, which is why he made the $50,000 donation to the Meyer Kraft Foundation when he signed his big contract. It's not clear whether the Patriots failed to grasp the enormity of the risk they were taking by giving Hernandez such a big contract, or whether they were confident they could keep his off-field behavior in check. Either way, it wouldn't be very long before he began to spiral out of control very publicly. You know what's not smart? Job sites that overwhelm you with tons of the wrong resumes to sort through. Sites that make you wait for the right candidate to apply to your job. But you know what is smart? Going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Gladiator to find your next great hire instead. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't wait for candidates to find you. ZipRecruiter finds them for you. Its powerful matching technology scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job, and actively invites them to apply. So you get qualified candidates fast. No more sorting through the wrong resumes, no more waiting for the right candidates to apply. It's no wonder that ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. By the way, that number one rating comes from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over a thousand reviews. Right now, as a listener of this show, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Gladiator. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash G-L-A-D-I-A-T-O-R. 
ZipRecruiter.com slash Gladiator. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. These days, you can practically get everything on demand. So why are you still taking trips to the post office to mail letters and packages when you can get postage on demand with Stamps.com? Stamps.com brings all the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your desk or home office. Use your own computer and printer to get official U.S. postage for any package or letter, and the mail carrier will pick it up. Stamps.com will even send you a digital scale so you can weigh your mail and print the exact amount of postage every time. Not only are you saving time not making trips to send letters and packages, but you can save money by paying exact postage and getting discounts on postage that you can't get from the post office. And Stamps.com is so easy to use. Just click, print, mail, and you're done. It's a must-have for businesses. What a no-brainer. Want to try it out? Right now, you can use our code GLADIATOR to get a four-week trial, including postage and a digital scale. All you have to do is go to stamps.com, and before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in GLADIATOR. That's stamps.com. Enter code GLADIATOR. The Patriots' owners were placing a big bet on Aaron Hernandez's future. He's one of the best tight ends I've ever played against. But maybe they should have talked more with his teammates first. He was also very difficult, you know, as a, as a person. Dane Fletcher showed up as a Patriots rookie the same year as Hernandez, in 2010. He was an inside linebacker, which meant that during those hot August days of training camp, he lined up against Hernandez day in and day out. At the time, he was very cocky. We definitely butted heads, and we, we got in a lot of fights at practice, and. You know, and a lot of it is just the competition. He was very competitive, I was very competitive. Fletcher had been invited to Patriots camp as a free agent, while Hernandez had come from the top college football program in the country. The pressure on every player was immense, but even more so for Fletcher. I, I got something to prove, I got a lot more to prove than he does. And so we battled every single day, and there wasn't a day where we didn't battle. And when he says battle, he means battle. The two literally fought throughout their first weeks in training. If it was one-on-one -on -one and he beat me, I would try and catch up to him and, you know, throw him down to the point where he would get up and throw the ball at me or we would go to blows and, you know, punch each other in the face. And Fletcher says they were disciplined for it. But in the back of your mind, you know that the coaches like that. And maybe not taking it to the part where you're fighting, but they like the competition. They like to know that you got some guys on the team that like to compete and that are willing to compete in any situation. Fletcher and Hernandez clutched and wrestled and threw punches until one day, Hernandez came over to him in the locker room. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this guy is, just starts cr laughing crazy, kind of like this you know, monotone, crazy little laugh, almost like the Joker in Batman, I would say. Fletcher says he was exhausted. The two of them had battled in practice. And here was Hernandez, just laughing. He looks up at me, just blunt. He goes, I don't like you. And I said, finally, you said it. I said, I, I hate you. I said, I cannot stand you. I don't, I don't stand anything. I can't stand anything you're about. I, I, I just, I, I, I despise you. And he, that's why he started laughing. He goes, hey, but here's the deal. I respect you. Fletcher couldn't help but laugh. And from then on, Hernandez. Chico is what we call them. And Fletcher became friendlier. Not super close, he says, but they hung out together away from practice. I considered Chico my friend, and uh, we had some funny laughs in the locker room and whatnot. This is something we heard time and time again about Aaron Hernandez. He could be a goofball, a cut-up. He always had a big smile on his face. Here's sports reporter Greg Bedard again. This was a guy who you would see almost every day playing with the sons and daughters of staffers assistant coaches after training camp practice. And so the people that spend the most time with him have no problem putting their kids in his hands. And you're just like, okay, he's got the tattoos and stuff, but really underneath, he's a really good guy. But Brandon Lloyd, who joined the Patriots at the start of Hernandez's third season, learned about his disturbing behavior right away. I was warned by Wes Welker the first day of school walking into the locker room. Uh, walk into my locker and he stops me and 
kind of touches me on my on my shoulders and he's looking at me wide-eyed in my face and he says your locker is in between Gronkowski and Hernandez I just want to warn you that he's going to uh, talk about being bathed by his mother he's going to have his genitalia out in front of you while you're sitting on your stool he's going to have his towel and try to dry off in front of you while you're sitting at your locker. He's going to talk about gay sex. Just do your best to ignore it. Even walk away. So before I even met Aaron on a personal level, that was how I was warned about him prior to getting to my locker. Lloyd tried to steer clear. Maybe he's just looking for attention because he he was uh, very immature at times. More immature than a sports locker room because we played gay all the time. (laughs) We played grab ass, flipping towels, like all the cheesy stuff that happens in uh, sports movies where they lampoon in a a sports locker room. It happens. But the things that he was talking about was more so. It was was more graphic than us um, uh, slapping each other on the ass and laughing and giggling like normally happens in a male locker room. But he couldn't avoid interaction with his new teammate entirely. There would be swings where he'd be the most hyper-masculine, aggressive individual in the room, where he'd be ready to fight somebody in, in fits of rage. Or he'd be the most sensitive person in the room talking about cuddling with his mother. Or he'd ask me, do you think I'm good enough to play? So we had these moments where we did get along well. But there was also these moments where he was ready to uh, rage out on other players in the locker room. And it was these ups and downs that were constantly happening during the year. And his attitude even brought him into conflict with the Patriots' star quarterback. Hernandez was sidelined with an injury at the time. He was out at the walkthrough and flip-flops, trying to run around, limping around, laughing. He was loud, and and Tom uh, keeps a serious walkthrough. Tom Brady. If you're not a football fan, know this. Tom Brady is the heart and soul of the Patriots, the leader, and he has been since 2001. He holds quarterback records for most regular season wins, most Super Bowl appearances, and most Super Bowl wins. And you just don't mess with Tom Brady. And he was not pleased that day with Aaron Hernandez as he ran the team through a pregame walkthrough. And Tom says, shut the F up. What? Get the F out of here. You know, in this particular walkthrough, he's been calling Bill Belichick daddy. Bill Belichick. Another Patriot you don't mess with. Belichick is the team's longtime coach and one of the best in the history of the game. He's addressed him as daddy since the season began. So Tom, you know, has kicked him out of a practice, but sees these moments where it was like he went from this childlike, laughing, disruptive behavior, calling Bill Belichick daddy, and then he storms off in a fit of rage. I don't know anybody else that's, you know, dumb enough to push that limit with Tom where Aaron would, would push that, you know. He, was, he would push the, you know, any button he could, he would screw off and do it. Fletcher says that was a big part of who Aaron Hernandez was. He took a special kind of pleasure in unnerving you. If he's under your skin, he knows it. That was a guy that knew it. He knew how to manipulate people. He knew how to get under your skin. Was Hernandez just the team clown? Did he say outlandish things in the locker room just to get a rise out of you? Or did it go beyond that? It was red flag. It went straight past caution to red flag. Because his teammates knew that Hernandez's disturbing behavior wasn't confined to the locker room. Away from the field, he didn't hang out much with other Patriots. Instead, he ran with a group of friends from his hometown of Bristol, Connecticut. And while his teammates didn't know for sure, they suspected his friends were no strangers to trouble. Dane Fletcher was among those suspicious teammates. Sometimes Hernandez would visit the home Fletcher shared with the Patriots' other star tight end, Rob Gronkowski. 
and they would play video games. Once, when both Fletcher and Hernandez were injured, they had some extra time on their hands and... I was like, hey, you know, I'll, I'll get a limo for the night. Let's go downtown, enjoy life a little bit. Hernandez was up for it, but Fletcher had something to tell him first. I told him, I said, Chico, here's the one rule, though. You can bring one of your friends. I know how it is not to have friends. You can bring one of your friends. I, I don't agree with your friends. I, you know, for the most part, I knew that they were trouble. Uh, everybody kind of did. But I told him, like, out of respect, you can bring one, but not any more than that. They went out that night in downtown Boston. And Fletcher remembers that the evening ended strangely. One thing led to the next. We were taking the limo back to Foxborough. We're all loading up in the limo, and there's a couple of detectives in the limo. And he goes, they think they got something on me. And I'm, I told them they could get in because they don't have nothing on me kind of deal. And I was like, leave me out of this. It was just kind of a crazy night. And there were more red flags. Hernandez's agent, Brian Murphy, visited his home around the time he signed his new contract. Initially, people respect you because of the contract, but the contract's not going to define you as a person or a player. It's what you do on and off the field, Murphy told him, that earns people's respect. And during this conversation, he jokingly said, I believe he was jokingly at the time, that, no, no, I get my respect through weapons. Murphy later told a grand jury that Hernandez didn't just say it. He actually opened a closet, reached in, and showed Murphy a firearm. I'll say this. Certainly wasn't a joke that I would make. You know, like, I I didn't grow up in a world where people got their respect through weapons. And I think it was probably, you know, a little bit of insight into the world he did grow up in and and that it was one where people uh, garnered respect through weapons, uh, I would assume, you know. And so in every joke, in every... um, comment, there's always a a lining of tooth to it, right? Um, I knew he was joking, but I think my response to the comment was, Aaron, like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's not what people who sign second contracts and are are Pro Bowl tight ends say or do or, you know, even joke about. Murphy says he didn't take the comment lightly, but even though he knew about serious troubles Hernandez was facing off the field, he never felt it was his place to share that information with the Patriots. Instead, he says he saw his role as a mentor. You know, 90% of my time with Aaron was trying, was, you know, encouraging him to, to become a better person. We all need to become better. And then it just, I just, in some ways, I felt a real sense of failure. You know, I know part of your story here is how could we have stopped this how could we have prevented this and my job's not just to negotiate a huge contract or get in marketing dollars or whatnot it's to help him become the best person he can be and i failed miserably in that regard not long after hernandez became a father his fiance Cheyenne jenkins gave birth to a baby girl on hernandez's 23rd birthday I was proud of him because here he is. He just signed this deal. He had his daughter. He's, you know, for me, he finally pulled his head out, you know, like, okay, you're not an idiot anymore, you know, and to now he's actually working for something and playing for something, not just himself. But there were other, darker things unfolding in Aaron Hernandez's life away from the stadium lights. Still, looked at from one angle, the angle where you see the million-dollar home, the $41 million contract, and the new baby girl with his fiance. It was a time of hope and promise. Yet any hope that Dane Fletcher or any other teammate had for Hernandez would soon begin to fade amid a flurry of lurid headlines. What would it look like if we all listened more? Just like listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks motivates us, inspires us, it can even bring us closer together. And there's no better place to listen than Audible, because now Audible members get even more. Exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, Audible originals, and more. One title I recommend is Outliers, The Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell, in which the author asks the question, what makes high achievers different? It's a great book that is as insightful as it is entertaining. 
With Audible, when I'm done with this title, I have an unmatched selection of audiobooks to choose from for my next listen, and my books are mine to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. You can start a 30-day trial and get your first audiobook free. Just go to audible.com slash gladiator or text gladiator to 500-500 to get started. That's audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash gladiator or text gladiator to 500-500. On June 16, 2013, 10 months after he received his big contract and eight months after the birth of his daughter, the fragile balance of Aaron Hernandez's life tipped forever. In the morning, he got on Twitter and posted a shout out, Happy Father's Day. That night, he went to dinner with his fiance, Shayana, at a Providence cafe. Patrons saw him smoking weed outside and the bar manager said the tab for Hernandez, Jenkins, and two other couples included 11 cognacs, 10 sex on the beach cocktails, seven beers, and two vodkas. Hernandez texted a friend from Bristol from the restaurant to say he wanted to meet up and keep the night going. He wrote, Please make it back, because I'm definitely trying to step for a little. Then he texted another friend, Odin Lloyd. It was a convoluted message arranging for them to meet that night. Hernandez paid the bill at 12.20 a.m. What happened next would be pieced together in the coming days and months. The next night, a woman named Ursula Ward received a phone call at her Dorchester home from the Massachusetts State Police. Are you Ursula Ward? I said, yes, I am. He says, do you know Odin Light? I say, yeah, that's my son. She is a single mom soft-spoken, religious. And I asked him, I said, is my son okay? And he says, ma'am, I'm going to send two detectives to your house to speak to you. She told us she jumped out of bed and got dressed, and she waited. It's the longest 45 minutes of my life. Finally, the doorbell rang. (sighs) I remember three men came up the stairs, or four, maybe. And he was asking me a few questions about Odin, and I got so upset because I'm waiting for you to tell me why you're here instead of asking me questions. And I said, is my son okay? And he says, Ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to tell you, but your son was shot and killed. Odin Lloyd had been shot six times and left to die in an industrial park in North Attleboro, near Hernandez's home. The motive for this execution-style murder has never become clear. Within days, police zeroed in on a suspect. Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez was seen partying with this man, Odin Lloyd, at a Boston bar Friday. From the pocket of the victim's clothing, they pulled out rental car keys linked to Hernandez. As you said, Hernandez has not been ruled out as a suspect, but suspicions continue to swirl, not only about his group of friends, but also about his allegedly violent past. Video surveillance at a gas station showed Hernandez with his two accomplices that night. And at Hernandez's own home, Surveillance cameras showed him carrying what appeared to be a gun around the time of the killing. On June 20th, as the police and the media circled around him, Aaron Hernandez tried to retreat to the protection of the New England Patriots. We're going to interrupt uh, that report briefly to give you a live look here at the... He uh, drove to Gillette Stadium. Just saw Patriots tight end uh, Aaron Hernandez. News helicopters showed him walking into the stadium, but the team sent him away. And leaving Gillette, uh, we did Aaron Hernandez was arrested for murder on June 26th. And within hours, Boston detectives were linking him to two more homicides. The Patriots cut him and terminated his contract 90 minutes after his arrest. His NFL career 
was over. Police led former Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez out of his mansion in handcuffs this morning, a shirt covering his chest and arms. The state charged Hernandez with murder, saying he orchestrated the killing of an associate, Odin Lloyd. Aaron Hernandez's fall from grace sent shockwaves throughout Boston and the NFL. His conviction, his life imprisonment, and finally, his suicide added layer upon layer to this complex story. It's been a year and a half since his death. There are still profound questions that we in the Globe Spotlight team wanted answers to. How had Aaron Hernandez gone from one of the NFL's most successful players to jail in the space of less than a year? The person who might know best is Aaron Hernandez himself. We can't speak with him directly, but we can hear from him. You have to find inner peace to be happy. Nothing you do is going to make you happy. Nothing you the Spotlight team obtained recordings of nearly 300 phone calls he made from jail while he awaited trial, a time when he occasionally looked back on all that he had had and all that he had lost. If you're not happy inside, then you mean, like, you'll never be happy. Just like me, like, by having money, like, I still was miserable. You know I mean, having everything in the world, I still was miserable, you know I mean? They don't definitively explain why he killed and who, beyond himself, is to blame. But they offer a glimpse into his mind. I tried as hard as I could to live, the, to live a dream life, but it didn't end up You didn't try as hard as you could, I'll tell you that. Huh? You did not try as hard as you could. Tell me how I could have tried harder. There's not one thing. I don't know how you could have. I lived, yeah. I lived for my dream life, but... It just didn't work out. I just couldn't live my life. Because I, I lived for certain people. But it is what it is. In ancient Rome, gladiators would put on their helmets and armor to compete for the public's entertainment and amusement. Some of these men, and sometimes women, would die in their first contests in the arena. Others lasted for many. Some were in the arena as a punishment, Others relish the chance at glory and train for years. We like to think this barbaric practice is ancient history, but the more my colleagues and I looked at football through the prism of Aaron Hernandez, we realized this story is bigger than one player. We had to wonder about the toll America's game has taken on the men who play it. I have an eight-year-old grandson, Logan. He loves football. He has stacks of NFL trading cards, he knows the name of every skilled player in the league. He wants to play tackle football, to be a gladiator. Should we let him? On the next episode of Gladiator, my spotlight colleague, Beth Healy, will take us back to Aaron Hernandez's childhood in Bristol. You know, you're in school and you see someone act up or someone not do well or this or that, and you're like, they didn't get beat enough. From the Boston Globe and Wondery, this is part one of six of Gladiator, an investigative series from the Spotlight team about Aaron Hernandez and Football Inc. If you'd like to help us spread the word, please give us a review and tell your friends to subscribe. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, NPR One, and every major listening app, as well as Wondery.com. If you're listening on a smartphone, tap or swipe over the cover art of this podcast. You'll find the episode notes, including some details you may have missed. You'll also find some offers from our sponsors. Please support our show by supporting them. And thank you. You can also read the Prince series of Gladiator at bostonglobe.com slash gladiator. Gladiator was written, reported, and hosted by me, Bob Holler, and by Beth Healy, Sasha Pfeiffer, Andrew Ryan, and our Spotlight editor, Patricia Wen. We'd also like to give special thanks to Globe editors Brian McGrory, Scott Allen, Mark Morrow, and Janice Page, Spotlight's public record specialist, Todd Wallach, and reporter Maria Kramer. Gladiator was produced by Amy Padula, sound designed by Jeff Schmidt, executive produced by George Lavender, Marshall Louie, and Hernan Lopez for Wondery. 